Relative gain array, or RGA, is the method that process engineers will use to determine to, how to pair which input with which output. And uh, the way I look at it is you are now the love doctor and it's your job to figure out um, what's the best relationship to have in your design of your uh, control system. And so um, it is very important to understand how to do this stuff because you get instability in your system uh, if you get it wrong. And so in many ways, it is much like uh, the dating game in the real world. So uh, I think it's pretty cool. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out by taking a look at a classic uh, two by two MIMO process that we've been introduced to. We've got two outputs, two inputs, and we're going to be analyzing this system at a steady state. And at this steady state, uh, we will understand uh, the gain in the form, instead of dealing with the transfer functions, we're now going to be working with just the gains, uh, K11, K12, K21, and K22. And so um, the first step that we'll do is begin to dissect and perform the linear algebra um, to determine that Y1 is equivalent to K11 times U1 plus K12 times U2 y2 is equivalent to k21 times u1 plus k22 uh, times u2 and it's very important to remember we are working at steady state and uh, the way we do that is we essentially uh, can let s equal zero because in our frequency domain when we're working with our process control functions that we derived previously um, that will be what k11 is and so uh, if we let just to uh, clarify here, if we let um, G11 evaluated as equals zero, um, that tells us what K11 is. And we do the same for the other three um, transfer functions. And so now that we have derived this relationship, we will now define what relative gain is. And uh, I'll be using the notation lambda sub ij. And in words, what it tells us, and it, it's not that great of an explanation, but um, it tells us the gain between input j and output i when all other loops are open, divided by the gain between input j and output i when all the other loops are closed. And uh, I didn't understand what this meant when I first read it, but um, essentially what it means is we will hold all other inputs constant And uh, we hold all other outputs constant. Uh, and so um, what I'll do next is we'll go through this two by two MIMO and determine what lambda sub one one is, the relative gain between output one and input one. And uh, to do that, uh, let's first analyze what the numerator of lambda ij would be. And so in the case of lambda 1, 1, it'll be equivalent to the partial derivative of output 1 uh, by partial derivative uh, with respect to input 1, holding all other inputs constant, which in this case would just be u2. But if we had multiple inputs, we would also hold u3 and dot, dot, dot uh, constant. And then we divide it by partial derivative of output one with respect to input one, holding all other um, outputs constant, which in this case would be just y2. And uh, so to do that, we will turn to these equations that we've written up here. And uh, we'll recognize that uh, when we take the partial of y1 with respect to u1, um, holding u2 constant of, sorry, bad notation, um, 
of the following equation, k11 u1 plus k12 u2, uh, because u2 is a constant, k12 is also a constant, this term is equal to zero, um, this, uh, when we hold u2 constant, is just equal to k11. So that's pretty nice, and now you already know what your numerator is of lambda 1, 1. Now, however, when we want to determine what uh, lambda, or um, what the denominator of lambda should be, uh, it does get a little bit trickier. So uh, what we do is, because y2 is now a constant and these are deviation variables, that means that zero will be equivalent to k21 uh, u1 plus k22 times u2, and this was equal to y2. Um, what happens when we uh, solve for that is we find um, that if we solve for u2, we get minus k21 u1 over k22. We plug u2 into our top equation for y1, which was uh, k11 u1 plus k12 times u2, um, and we uh, plug it in, I'll just get to what the final result is. Uh, we now realize that when we take dy1, du1, holding y2 constant, uh, we will find that we uh, reach result k11 minus k12 uh, times uh, k21 divided by k22. And uh, the algebra is very straightforward. I'm just doing it for the sake of brevity. Um, so now that we've defined both the numerator and the denominator, um, we can define what lambda 1 1 should be and so sorry uh, what lambda 1 1 ends up be sorry sorry about that so uh, what lambda 1 1 ends up being is the following so we'll after we do some more algebraic uh, simplifications we'll have 1 divided by 1 minus k12 times k21 over k11 k22 and uh, so this gets us the relative gain of output one to input one and um, that's a small piece in the puzzle but things do simplify very nicely later on and so what we turn to next is defining uh, what our overall uh, relative gain array is and so the relative gain array is uh, the symbol capital lambda, and it is equivalent to lambda 1 1, lambda 2 1, lambda 1 2, lambda 2 2. And uh, now that we've defined lambda 1 1, uh, we can go ahead and just plug this right in and uh, analyze our system. Now, the really cool thing that happens if we um, have a square matrix if we have a square um, transfer function matrix, is that our RGA array will have some very nice properties to it. Um, the sum of the rows must equal one and the sum of the columns must equal one. And so what does that mean? It tells us that uh, lambda one one plus lambda one two must equal one lambda 1 1 plus lambda 2 1 must equal 1 and lambda 1 1 must equal lambda 2 1 and so in that case we can rewrite our relative gain array sorry as the following we we'll have lambda 1 1 1 minus lambda 1 1 1 minus lambda 1 1 and lambda 1 1 and uh, so this is really cool because all we needed to do was define lambda 1 1 in this example to have fully defined our uh, our relative gain array and uh, I highly recommend looking at the derivation or the proof in the textbook of this um, but uh, intuitively what you can tell yourself is because we're looking at relative gain relative 
should hint at being normalizable. And so these uh, summing of rows and columns to one um, should make a bit of sense. And so um, now that we've reached this result, uh, this is the big prize at the end of the day. And so what do we actually get from our relative gain array? Well, uh, we want uh, lambda one one to be as close to one if we wanted to pair input one with output one. Um, and the uh, contrapositive is also true. So what I mean by that is after, if we had a real example with real numbers and values for uh, all those gains, K11 and so on, um, what we would find is that at the end of the day, our relative gain array would have some values like this, 0 0.01, 0 0.99, 0 0.99, and 0 0.01. And so in this ca case, um, and you might be given this on a test, uh, given this, how should you pair the inputs? And so now you're now that you're an experienced love doctor, uh, you will recognize that because um, you are far better off pairing. In this example, we should pair input one with output two because we found is that lambda one one was a lot less than one um, and uh, therefore we should go with this pairing u1 with y2 and u2 with y1 and so um, this will help us out a lot when we're designing our controllers um, and this summarizes or concludes uh, the relative gain array and its properties if we're working with a square matrix um, and uh, i hope you guys find it useful let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.